is up there, TCG here and welcome back to our TCG video on my channel. On this channel you get daily competitive Pokemon TCG videos so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and become a member of the Zapdos TCG community. Also this is gonna be incredible news for people playing competitively. There's gonna be some huge changes uh, reducing 66% uh, of the people that currently have a world's invite. So it's gonna be way harder to get a world's invite and uh, there's mixed opinions about that. If you have uh, opinions about it, let me know down below in the comment section and let's get a discussion started. But I'm gonna be reading the announcement. I'm gonna give you all the uh, adaptations and changes coming to the 2025 season. And uh, most importantly, I'm gonna give my opinion and try to motivate you guys to still play the game. Because uh, 2025 season will start over in July and let's dive into this video and uh, if you feel uh, Yeah, if you like uh, the content I'm making on the channel Let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button only requires one tiny second every time But does help out the channel tremendously with that being said 2025 Pokemon Championship Series update Learn about the changes coming to the 2025 Pokemon Championship Series and prepare for your competitive journey this season after another exciting season of battles across the Pokemon TCG video games and Pokemon Go, we're uh, ready to announce a suit of changes coming to the 2025 circuit that include adjustments to the Pokemon World Championship qualification system, the championship points, updates and more. The 2025 Pokemon Championship series will run from July 2024 to May 2025 with the expectations, uh, with, the, yeah, with the exceptions of the North American Internationals and uh, the World Championships of course. More info about uh, the Unite shenanigans will be uh, yeah uh, dropped after the World Championship. So, with that being said, we are a TCG uh, focused channel. I have been playing since 2011, have uh, 10 years, actually a decade of experience. I have already five World's Invites under my belt. And I can tell you guys that getting the World's Invite uh, the last couple of years was a little bit too easy. Definitely if you combine the fact that we actually have 1,000, over 1,000 players in the TPCI structure over in the West. So we are, I'm counting US, Canada, Oceania, Europe, uh, Latin America and uh, the Middle East and South Africa all grouped together here over 1000 invites for Honolulu, Hawaii, this World Championships and uh, the Pokemon company decided this is way too much. Asia is already uh, ha in a disadvantage at the, the get-go. So what they're going to be doing here is they're going to be giving us the same treatment that uh, the top percentage of uh, a specific rating zone get a World's Invite. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the numbers uh, very shortly, but what's that, what does it mean is that um, I would say 60% of the people that currently has an invite will no longer have an invite if they would implement that currently. Very crazy numbers, I know, but we're gonna be talking about it all in this video. So uh, let's uh, move on with the announcement. The qualification system for the Pokemon World Championships is uh, changing for the 2025 season. In 2025, a set number of players from each rating zone age division and game will earn an invitation to the world championship based uh, uh, on their championship point leaderboard standings. So the final standings is where it's at. No longer you're gonna say like, oh, I have 600 CP, yo, you have your invite, I have 500 CP, no fixed threshold anymore. It is actually the top uh, number of players. This update applies to the Pokemon TCG video game and Pokemon Go. Uh, most recently invitations were based on the fixed CP threshold that players needed to accumulate to receive an invitation. As uh, I gave an example, 600 for US and Canada, 500 for Europe. And that was already a boost from the previous years because for Yokohama it was a ridiculously low number for Europe. It was 250, even though we didn't get any locals until the third and the fourth quarter. It did make a little a bit of sense because it was also way too easy. For me personally, I have uh, always gotten my invite around um, the period in February. So uh, the last like couple of uh, months in a season, I practically do nothing and just chillax. And that's no longer going to be the case here. It's going to be a rat race in that sense is that you have to keep up with the best. Uh, let's say, oh, I have, uh, I'm in the top 125, which will be the number for Europe as well as for uh, US and Canada. You will need to advance and play even more games if you are dropping down a little bit uh, throughout the season. But in addition to uh, qualifying via championship points in the leaderboards, the individual top uh, performers at major events will also get an auto invite. I'm thinking about uh, regional and championship special event uh, champions will receive an auto invitation just like last season. And also the top four finishes or every international championships uh, will also get an auto invite, which is great. So if you get a top four at an uh, IC, you get an invite as well. So and those will not count towards the number of uh, the amount of on the leaderboard. 
Uh, as the Pokemon Championship series continues to grow, it's mind-boggling how crazy it grows, uh, this adjustment will provide a variety of long-term benefits. This includes balancing player qualifications across all rating zones to foster uh, diverse competition. Because now, uh, over in the West, we are with way more people than uh, people from uh, Asia, which is not making any sense. So they need to like balance that out and that's exactly what they're doing here. So we're prepared to provide the best competitor uh, experience uh, possible at the Pokemon World Championships and better supporting the growth of the game as a whole. We also look forward to sharing more about the Championship Point Season Reward Program for trainers who show great dedication to the Play Pokemon program, which will operate similarly uh, to the CP threshold from recent years. Okay, with that being said, the numbers are now on the screen. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pick your zone from the TPCI structure and uh, just take a look. As we see here, I'm going to be focusing on the Master Division because I'm from the Master Division and most of my viewer base is from the Master Division as well. But you can also see your numbers for Senior and Junior right here on the screen. So, US and Canada, the top 125 players get an invite. For Europe, top 125 as well. Latin America, 100. Oceania, 20. And the Middle East and South Africa, 10. It's all based on how many people are playing in those zones and I should know because I know the audience that are actually watching the videos and that actually makes sense if I see the numbers right here. So, what does that mean? Let's just dive into uh, my current leaderboard ranking. Let's just say Europe and uh, let's go to top 125. I currently am ranked in this season uh, 45th. So, I would still get the invite if they would implement that currently. So, uh, top 125, that means that the CP threshold, if I see it currently here, is 552. But remember that this will actually increase because people will be playing more to make sure they 100% have their invite. You're never sure if you have your invite if you're like uh, on the lower end of the top 125 people. So there's always going to be uh, something changing left and right. Let's take a look at what happens over in uh, the United States and Canada. So what would that mean for the top 125? That means you will need, uh, let's see here. Um, it does seem like you need 660 championship points. 660, that's kind of crazy. So uh, 660, that means there's definitely going to be, you need way more CP to then qualify once more for the 2025 season. So far it's clear, but that might be even higher if more people start playing events. Uh, if they already have a lot of CP, but they're afraid that it won't be enough to secure the invite, they will still keep on playing, which means people that take a break, usually that already have their invite. Oh, I have my invite. At one point I had an invite in November and I didn't play the rest of the year. Uh, I just played for regionals for fun, played rogue decks and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, who remembers like the gore guys of the world and all that uh, funky decks out there. With that being said, um, there is definitely going to be a huge impact because currently in the TPCI structure, there's 1,019 people with an invite. This is actually the no uh, invite uh, number for uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, you do see here in the US and Canada, that's 269 players that have an invite. That will be dropped down to half. Half of the people that currently have an invite won't have an invite in the new structure. For Europe and Latin America, it's even worse. So that's actually meaning that uh, almost like 60% of the people having an invite currently will, won't have an invite if they would do the same thing next year. So they're gonna cut down the amount of players and the TPCI structure uh, ridiculously. There's gonna be 380 Master Division players. And that's actually, this is the Master Division, by the way, if you were wondering. So 380 instead of 1,019. So. They need, uh, they want less players at Worlds and that's exactly what they're gonna be having if they, uh, yeah, they now have this new structure. So follow along because there's way more changes coming. With that being said, for the VGC, there's also some stuff happening. I am not a VGC or a Pokemon Go channel, so uh, let's skip those. Let's uh, head over to the Pokemon Championship Point League and Global Challenge, that's uh, video games, I suppose, right? Um, uh, leak. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, the global challenge is actually for VGC, but there's leak. So we have leak challenges and leak cups. Bash finish limit is now four. Yeah, that's right. Four best finishes for your challenges. Four best finishes for your cups. Last season it was six. The season before that it was eight. So they're dropping down like flies. It's going down. It's going down. And uh, the reason for it is that we get way more players. Regionals in the U.S. are like an average of two thousand players. 
A couple of years ago, it was an average of 1,000 players. So that's doubling up the player base. Doubling up the player base is mind boggling. So that's why they are implementing these huge changes right here. Not too much emphasis on playing locals. You can play a local here and there and uh, maybe get some points. The points are still the same though. So don't worry about how, how much points can you actually require from locals. Currently, if you win four League Cups, you have 200 championship points. If you f win four of the challenges, you actually get 60 points in total. So that's 260 that you can get from locals, which is still huge if you are doing well at locals, uh, but regionals is where it's at. And we're gonna be taking a look at that right now. So that's another huge change. The best finish limits going from six for these locals to four. And uh, the following change here is for reg regionals and internationals and specials. They're all grouped together. So your best finish limit for regional special events and internationals all grouped together is six. In the past, internationals were divided. So you can have like six best finishes for regionals and special events and all the internationals would count. But now it's like grouped together here. Uh, this still means, uh, if you take a look at the CP you are getting from these events, is that people might claim that internationals are pay to win. In my opinion, if, it, if I take a look at this CP, uh, CP that I see currently on the screen, I think internationals, in my opinion, should be best finish limit one. Because now, people that have a lot of free time on their hands, that do not have like uh, children and uh, do have a lot of money and all that stuff, are gonna have a huge benefit because they're gonna just go for their internationals, get a lot of championship points with that, and uh, people cannot beat if they just go to regionals. So, there's something uh, like right there. Like, in my opinion, I always play one internationals per year. That's it, my uh, own region, Europe, and that's what I do. Never went to NAIC, never went to LAIC. Uh, the OCIC has been scratched and canceled, which is unfortunate. I wanted to visit Australia at least once in my life, but yeah, maybe we'll get to that at one point. But my main point is clear. Now regional and special events and internationals all grouped together, bash finish limit six. Okay, look at that CP. The CP you get is no longer 200 if you win a regionals, it's 350. If you win an internationals, 750. That's a whole bunch of CP that you can get. So people that can just fly over to all the ICs and do well have the biggest advantage in the world and will push out the people that uh, don't have the time or money to spend to go to all these internationals. So getting in the top 125 will be really difficult if you cannot at least attend one internationals. And I'm not even talking about round zero, right? Who remembers round zero? registering for a special event to register for a special event actually not a special event that's also really tricky because that's typically free but registering for um an internationals is sometimes people cannot even join because there's not enough space i hope the pokemon company actually provides more space in these venues otherwise people will miss out on i and an ic and if you miss out on one ic you're done for the top 125 race is sometimes over but yeah look at that you can still get a lot of cp if you get like uh, your event but top 125 folks um it's gonna be a battle it's gonna be a battle and i'm very excited uh, to be part of it because i love the high end of the competitive play for me currently the last couple of years definitely the last three were a bit too easy I got my invite in November, got an invite in January at one point. So I had so much time on my hands that I don't, didn't go to events. I feel the competitiveness that now I will have that. And I can understand this in my opinion, but for people that just, oh, I was so close to my invite and now they're even making it harder. That's going to be feeling like, um, yeah, a sore thumb for sure. Uh, it doesn't feel too great, but you have to remember, you can set your own goals. I have played the game, I started in 2011 and I actually played six years just having fun playing the battle roads back in the days, like playing the challenges, playing the cups, and I have so many fond memories of just playing those local events. Going to a world championship was the, the first thing on my mind. I just had fun with friends at local game stores, playing the game because the game is just that fantastic. It is it only making sense that the game is growing because yeah, they, I can actually see the numbers as, as well. I, I started this channel, now I'm almost at 70,000 subscribers, so I definitely know, I feel that the game is growing. More eyeballs on the YouTube videos, more people playing at tournaments. So my biggest hope is that uh, people uh, from Pokemon will actually provide big enough venues so people are not left disappointed. Okay, let's move on. So we do know that uh, yeah, regionals and uh, internationals get a way more CP and uh, that's gonna be the main focus of the journey or of, of a Pokemon World Championship. Now to the booster packs and caching. Players will also receive Pokemon TCG booster packs for competing in Pokemon TCG 
uh, video game and Pokemon Go championship events. The number of booster packs earned is based on individual placement as well as the number of participants in an event. Pricing that is dependent on the attendance of the event is referred to as a kicker. We're expanding the booster pack prize kicker in the 2025 season for the majority of the championship events. Here's the breakdown for the booster packs. I currently don't uh, mind getting more booster packs. Opening packs is fun, right? I always like uh, open up a box at least when I win like if I win like three boxes I open up one always just to have some fun with friends the rest of them I sell off but uh, it's always nice to win packs and definitely if like uh, let's say you are in a tournament with uh, you're in the top 500 and whatever right you at least can get some packs now like if there's like 1000 players out there and you get top uh, 256 you at least get some packs which is a, a small consolation prize for sure and even if you win an event you get like that's a lot of packs i should do the math here i think it's around three boxes right still but they have uh, upped the amount so uh, usually and you get top 60 uh, top 128 you get nothing now you do get a box if there's like 2,000 uh, players, which uh, most of the time in uh, the US that's the case. Cash pricing are, are also on the line at regionals, internationals and world championships. Last year saw a substantial increase and we're min maintaining these prize values for the 2025 championship series. So uh, the cash prizes are still the same and uh, you need to be 18 years or older to get of course those uh, rewards. Under the age of 18 awards of 5,000 or more through uh, Choice scholarship or Pokemon Visa prepaid card. Uh, for the people up, up 18, you can get cash. And I know that because that's what drives me to be playing better because I can then invest that uh, yeah, money into the channel. And uh, you see how we go with that. It's nice. Uh, okay, let's see here. The Pokemon TCG cash prices for the Master Division, still the same $10,000 if you get first place. Uh, 1,000 if you get top 32, so that's already nice. Like uh, last season, I got $3,000 alone by just uh, getting. I think uh, I got like top 32, I got top 16, and then there was also a special event where you don't get any prizes, unfortunately. So I had to be satisfied with $3,000, which still helped out. It uh, helped me pay for all the regionals and travel and all that stuff for that season. So. It is definitely a motivator, definitely if you don't plan on getting the world's invite, you can just have your goals set up. My goals personally when I started playing the game was like, win a league challenge. Then I was like, win a cup. Get my first day two at uh, a regional championship. Get my first top eight. Get cash prizes uh, from events. So you can always get set your personal goal and the last of the uh, personal goal should be the world's invite because now only the best of the best will be at worlds and that's uh, personally how I like it. It will definitely be more competitive, which uh, is always great for the game. And uh, will uh, strive the people to be playing better. International champion, because there's always people like getting their invite purely by locals. I know some people don't have the time. Like, I know. If you have any opinions about that, let me know in the comments. Let's just get a discussion started and all that. But if you don't have the time to invest to get a world invite, then you are playing the... You should not, like, change your invites in the first place. You're like, I want my invite, but I have three kids and I, I can only play one cup every quarter and I can only attend one regionals every quarter and uh, I want my invite. That could be the case. If you don't have that much uh, free time on your hands, quality over quantity. That's what I always say. You can always try to play that one event and there's always the chance you could win that event or at an IC get top four at an event and you can also get your invite that way. So there's a multiple ways to get the invite, get in the top 125 over in Europe and the US, Canada, etc. Or uh, get top four at an IC or win a regionals. But that doesn't mean that is the end goal. Just try to enjoy the game. I cannot stress that out enough. The friends we make along the way really make this hobby the best there is. So, and also the traveling to different cities, I'll say super superb. Internationals give 25 grand, insane. And uh, if you get top 64, even two grand already. So ICs are the best of the best. World championships, $50,000, here you go. And that's actually still already the case. So uh, at Honolulu, Hawaii, let's battle for at least some prize money. That would be nice. Uh, then there's also, uh, let's see here, uh, yeah. That's for video games, Pokemon Go. Let's move on. International travel awards. So uh, there's still travel awards. 
that give, are giving out for the first uh, to the fourth of a specific region get their travel award right here. I don't know if there's any changes uh, made to these. I assume not. But the thing is like in the past, it was like the top 22 of like a specific region and then the top 16 in uh, America, if I recall correctly. I don't know if is that exact same number, but now it's the same for every region is the one to the first, fifth to the eighth, nine to the 16th and the 17th to the 32nd will get priority registration for internationals. So uh, at least they will be able to attend internationals, but there's still like some travel awards to be getting along here. Okay, let's see, adjusting the Swiss rounds, another huge change coming to the new season. And that is actually that it's gonna be uh, six, you need 18 points to go to day two. I know it seems ridiculous. Uh, no longer it's gonna be, oh, I'm gonna ID. You wanna ID, please ID with me. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna be a thing. It's gonna be competitive, man. You need to get six wins. Hopefully people will not do the illegal uh, rolling of dice uh, to just determine a winner. Uh, gentlemen's agreements, I'm all for, but rolling a dice, uh, tricky. If the judge finds out, you're gonna get disqualified. You don't wanna have that. So uh, gentlemen's agreements, I'm all for it, but that does also give a less of an advantage to controlish decks out there. Uh, tying is dying and it's gonna be the thing. Tying is dying already at Worlds, so um, let's talk about it. Similarly to the 2024 World Championships, shifts to the Swiss format uh, and the method for determining which players advance to the top cut will continue throughout the season, uh, the 2025 season. For special uh, championships, regional championships, international championships and the World Championships, the Pokemon TCG tournaments will be played in a more conventional Swiss round count plus an additional round rather than the modified version of Swiss format used in recent seasons. So, uh, depends on the number of participants. Let's just uh, grab this one. Uh, if there are 1,024 players, you have uh, your match, uh, your day two point threshold is 18, meaning six wins. If you get six wins, you get a day two. No longer 19, so six to one is not gonna count and there's also gonna be less rounds. Only eight rounds, so that means that tournaments will end sooner, but if there's over 4,000 players, like 4,096, there's gonna be nine rounds instead and the kicker will be 21 points to go to day two. So it also moves up. And day two, there's also only a, a little bit more Swiss rounds. So that's actually pretty interesting. So less Swiss rounds, less rounds in general, but you need to do better, I suppose. So let's imagine uh, the latest regionals over in the US. It was over 2,000 and... Uh, 49 if I'm mistaken, so that was still nine rounds, but here over in Europe most of the time There's only gonna be eight rounds meaning that is a huge change six two is a day two uh, And that's gonna be the not longer thing. It's gonna be seven two for uh, Yeah, a tournament over 20 uh, 50 players. So 2050 players. Oh Currently there's nine. That's gonna be nine rounds and you need to win seven. You need to go seven two uh, Tying will literally mean dying over in this new structure. Moving forward, uh, Swiss round breakdown details for tournaments with fewer than uh, 33 participants will be clarified at a later date. So uh, they don't have uh, amount of points quite yet, but I don't think maybe a specific special event over in Latin America that doesn't, uh, but the game has grown so much. We will never get that uh, amount of players. There's always gonna be more. After all the Swiss rounds are completed, the top eight competitors plus all competitors with the same number of match points as the eighth place to a maximum of 32 will advance into an asymmetrical top cut. Asymmetrical top cut, let's go. Say goodbye, Bubbles. If you ever bubbled ninth, I feel your pain. It's never gonna happen again. It's never gonna happen again. So a single elimination bracket to determine the winner of the event. Overall, this change to the Swiss will promote more streamlined tournament days to improve both the flow of the event and the potential daily fatigue. Yeah, there was a lot of tournaments. Like I remember like playing nine rounds and then playing six during day two. So that's 15 rounds in total. And then <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, for Top Cut, this update allows competitors a, a way uh, to better advance in a tournament based on their skills while reducing factors that are par partially out of their control, such as the opponent's match win percentage. Win percentage was just so crazy. At home competition, that is just for the Scarlet and Violet video games, not for the TCG. All regional championship and champion video games. Yeah, okay. 
It's still uh, about the TCG uh, regional championship. Mainly, uh, main events will take place Saturday and Sunday, and events listing that include a Friday date, feature side events, and smaller competition on that day. Special event award the same number of championship points as regional championships, but all other rewards uh, are in the discretion of uh, discretion of the event organizer. Special events are noted in green on the schedule below. This event schedule will be posted and updated uh, as soon as more events are announced. So for now. Uh, I'm gonna be focusing currently on uh, Europe, but you guys can check it out as well for uh, the US here. Uh, let's just talk about them all. Baltimore Regionals over in the US. Uh, Dortmund Regionals in, uh, yeah, oh, in September already. Dortmund Regionals over in Europe. There is uh, Brazil right there in the Glory Joinville Convention, whatever, in uh, Latin America. In Brazil, there's gonna be Peru special events. There's the Kentucky Regionals over in US. Lil again. They are so crazy fans of Lil. It's insane. So Lil also part of the squad again. Poland and Gdansk. That was fantastic. That was a great experience over in November. Uh, there is a special event in Argentina. There is the US uh, Sacramento Regionals. Uh, Stuttgart as well in uh, Europe. There's a special event in Colombia and then in Canada, Toronto, there is also regionals. That's the first part. There's, there's going to be more added, I'm sure. So the international championships schedule will be taking place. Once again, uh, the LAIC will be taking place in Sao Paulo, Brazil in November 2024. And then London will host the European internationals in February 25. Okay, that is a big change. It's no longer in April. It's going to be in uh, February. A couple months earlier than uh, the previous years. And then uh, over in New Orleans, uh, and, uh, NEIC will return there in June 2025. Fans planning to have planning ahead to New Orleans um, yeah, can also take uh, advantage of a special benefit. You can get discounted rates at hotels close to the event location and get a head start on planning next year's competition. So that's actually pretty nice because we already have the exact dates. That's the first time. Usually Pokemon waits like a bazillion amount of months before they showcase this information, but this is super useful for sure. Okay, so uh, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, huge changes. If we have to pick it a look, we get the exact dates for the ICs, uh, six best finishes for championships, uh, uh, for of course regional special events and internationals are grouped together. For the uh, locals, only the four best finishes for league challenges and league cups. That is also a huge change. It's going to be the top 125 for the US, Canada, as well as Europe. Then uh, a little bit different for Latin America. It's going to be 100. And then uh, for the, um, let's see here, OCI. For the people from Oceania, there's actually, uh, where do we have it here? Uh, let's go down again. Yeah, uh, the 20 best players from uh, Oceania and then uh, the top 10 players from Middle East and South Africa. Oh, that is a huge change. Talked about the best finish, lim best finish limits. Uh, more booster packs for more players. So more joy, more uh, opening it up. Cash, prize cash prizes stay the same. And uh, yeah, the stipends or the travel awards and all that stuff will be a little bit different because it's now uh, yeah the exact same thing for every region except for like in the past it was like the top 16 and top 22 and all that stuff now it doesn't seem to be that way anymore so that's super cool all right and then let's move forward the swiss rounds that's super important uh, most of the time uh, for people in europe it's going to be only eight rounds during day one you need uh, 18 match points over in the US, if you have over 20, or over 2,050 players, there's going to be 9 rounds. The same stuff, but you need uh, 21 points to advance to day 2. So less people in day 2 all around. So that are some of the huge changes that are coming to the 2025 season. Let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. Let's get that discussion started. I uh, am very curious to hear your opinions down below. The conclusion is, Worlds is harder, is more uh, gonna be exclusive, and it's gonna only be less players, 60% less players, if you can, uh, yeah, if you take a look at the players we have currently for this year's World Championship. Yeah, that's it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button, helps out in ridiculous ways. Go check out the sponsors that make the videos possible. We have dragonshield.com for your sleeves, binders, and deck boxes. Use the coupon ZABLUS5 to get 5% off your order. There's yourplaymat.com to create your own new, unique custom playmat. Potownstore.com for your TCG Live code card needs. You can get 5% off using the coupon ZABLUS TCG. And yourplaymat.com, uh, yeah, not yourplaymat, cardmarket.com for European players to buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. You can use the referral name ZABLUS TCG to help support the channel. 
Have yourself a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for brand new Pokemon TCG content, and the new season will start very, very shortly. Peace.